Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with another episode of Five Questions. And today we have a very special guest. It's uh, Rob, the sports card therapist. Rob, welcome to the channel. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you joining us. How have you been? Brian, man, thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. I've been, uh, I was saying to you off air, uh, been been watching what you've been doing from afar, man, and uh, and love what it is that you're building down there in Louisiana, man. So thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Rob is a very recent second time father, correct, Rob? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, within the last week of recording this, just had uh, had my second child. He was a healthy baby boy. He came a couple weeks early, and uh, but you know I'm always looking to make that new addition to the PC. So I was happy about that. If you had to describe having a second child, giving birth to your first son, and being on my channel, which one kind of ranks higher on your life your life goals, your life challenges that you set for yourself? Well, I tell you, man, it's like. I knew having my son, you know, my wife giving birth to my son and my him being my first son, I knew that was going to be one of the best life events ever. But the fact that I'm actually here with you right now, that yeah. absolutely makes this best week ever. Without That's great. A doubt. You're, you're, Rob, you're Cajun by osmosis today. I know you're in Connecticut, but you're, you're Cajun by osmosis just being near me. Um, fellas, look, if you're watching the channel and you haven't checked out Rob, this is his Instagram page right here. He's sports card therapist. Go give him a follow. Tons of great content. Uh, I found Rob primarily through his YouTube channel, Sports Card Therapist, also Sports Card Therapist on YouTube. So go check him out. Give him a subscription for sure. Uh, that's kind of how I stumbled upon uh, on Rob's channel and kind of got to know Rob, you know, uh, from a distance. And then we have a mutual friend, Amil um sarfani and so you guys host a show called the bounce which i love and i watch every single week uh i don't ever miss uh an episode of that um how has that been doing that show with with uh amil carrying amil yeah man i tell you what uh amil has been an incredible incredible addition i think to my content creation space you know it's like uh you know i was doing sports card therapist um you know at that point for probably about six to eight months and everything was going great you know growing the brand and and kind of uh i felt like i was kind of pulling in the right direction you know so to speak and uh and just being able to link up with him and i had him on my show then i went on his show then we kind of we got great feedback and and, and we started talking we're like we need to just kind of collab what would a collab look like yeah. for us and, and we spent probably about a month trying to figure out like okay we think we want to do something together, but we're not exactly sure what, like, what would it look like? And, and, you know, I think he had to look at it like, well, how would me pairing up with him affect the slab talk brand? And I had to look at it like, how would me pairing up with Amel impact the sports card therapist brand? And, uh, and I think at the end of the day, you know, it just, it, it's turned out to be something great, man. And, you know, it's, 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 it feels feels just like i'm talking with one of my best friends about cards on a weekly basis it, it, it does it comes off natural it's addition by addition you hear addition by subtraction this is a truly addition by addition and uh i think both of you guys bring a lot of great stuff to the uh to the world of uh of social media and content for sure all right i know you're strapped for time let's get cranking 10 words to describe yourself rob 10 10 words or phrases to describe yourself and how you fit into the hobby all right 10 words to describe myself i would say first and foremost collector collector then i would go with content creator vintage mm. goat goats level up therapist which is my my day job and uh self-care so collector content creator vintage level up goats therapist self-care boom impressive oh you didn't, you didn't even need 10 you're you're the first person who hasn't needed more than 10 you you knocked it out of the park you knocked it out of the park you got your priorities straight all right let's get cranking question number one rob if you had to divide yourself okay into a collector and investor by a percentage you got 100 percent to work with what percentage of rob is collector and what percentage is investor great question man phenomenal question love it um i think at this point i'm probably 75 percent collector 25 percent flipper um and 
So when I got I got into setting up shows just about a year ago. So I've been setting up at shows now for about a year. You know, I'm up here in Connecticut on the East Coast. We have an incredible amount of shows. Um, we are just, you know, our cup runneth over with shows and uh, it's, it's phenomenal. And uh, started setting up at shows and I primarily started doing that because I wanted to do it for content for the podcast. The podcast has always been my number one priority. And so I started setting up and I started realizing like, wow, setting up is really helping me level up in my collecting much quicker, much quicker. Is it helping yeah. me level up, kind of shuffle out some inventory and, you know, grab my cards. But, you know, just like I think most of us, you know, from being a kid, you know, I was a collector. So this hobby to me, I feel like a kid when I'm making deals. I feel like a kid when I'm talking cards. I feel like a kid when I'm talking to a grown man like you, two grown men here with kids. I feel like a kid still, you know, it yeah. doesn't feel like I'm, yeah. I'm trading stocks or anything like that. It feels like I'm trading baseball cards. Yeah. And I'm with you. And it's funny in your description of yourself, you and I'm just kind of looking past you right over your ear. When you describe yourself, you include goats as one of your few phrases to describe yourself in the collection. And it's funny because they are microscopically tiny in the background. The cards that you have behind you are microscopic for me. But I see the LeBron Ultimate Collection Auto. I see the Hulk Hogan. I can see that it's a Wilt Chamberlain. I can see the Ruth top left above Ooh, that. I can even see eye. 1993 Skybox Premium way over your left shoulder in that display case, which is not a special card, but I recognize it because I'm a Jordan collector, right? So I see goats everywhere. So you were yeah. you were tried and true uh, on that one for sure. Oh man, absolutely. And you know what? So this glass case right here, um, this is really what my primary PC is. And, and the beautiful thing about, you know, my PC is it's not something that is really set me back a, a lot yeah. of ways you know what i mean it's like these four cards are my pc too but this right here is the nostalgia pc so it's like yeah. i this entire case is all slabs of basically junk wax that i grew up just loving yeah. you know and yeah. and that's and to me that was important to just yeah. you know that's the cards the that i grew up the images i grew up because you know when i was younger i used to have the beckett magazine i used to get the price guide every month in the mail um, so I knew what the values were of, of cards, but really to me, it was more about the image and it was more about, you know, the cards that I had in my binder. So yeah. when I got back into the hobby years back, I said, you know what, I want to get all of those cards that make me feel most nostalgic slapped. And I, and I don't care if, you know, it's a $8 slab, I'm getting it and I'm putting it in my case. I love it. I love it. And uh, as you know, I have an army of junk wax slabs, low end, high end. It doesn't matter. Primarily low end, right? Because you can go, you can grow a massive Jordan collection with PSA sevens and eights oh, yeah. uh, at, at a very affordable rate. A lot of people get intimidated with the Jordan mark, but you can jump in and do what you're doing. That Skybox Premium. I don't care if it's PSA eleven. That's not a big card, but I recognize <laughs> it, right? So it does mean something. It, yeah. it, it reminds yeah. me of the '93 Skybox Premium. You know, it reminds me of that era. And then you got the Skybox, the I guess the 1990 Skybox right next to it. Um, okay, question number two: PSA, BGS, SGC, and CSG. Rank them uh, in Rob's order. This is Rob's order as far as not resale value because we all are on the same page with that. I think we know what that is. I mm -hmm. want you to rank them in order of Rob's preference. If you were going to send a raw card in to get graded, PSA, BGS, SGC, CSG, in order. Uh, you know, I think I would have to go with probably what the common the common idea is, and that's uh, PSA, BGS, SGC. Uh, to be honest, I, I probably wouldn't even put CSG in that category yet, man. I yeah. think you're giving them a little too much. You're putting a little too much respect on their name by yeah. uh, even including yeah. them in that category. Uh, you know, just I think they're still really trying to find themselves. You know, and it seems like they're doing big things by, you know, partnering up with with eBay and becoming the, uh, the number one authenticator for them. But, you know, the fact that they just, you know, they, they've only, you know, had to redesign their entire they did a complete overhaul of what their design yeah. looks like and it Already. feels like they're still trying to find their lane in the market but I, I but you know to go back i think bgs is truly at at risk of being replaced by uh sgc 
you're right there, right? I agree with you. Uh, so you see a big three like I do. I was being polite, including CSG. They've got yeah, a lot of yeah, money yeah. behind them, and they've got that affiliation with eBay. So I think that they're gonna they're gonna fight the fight. I see a big three. I don't personally use SGC, but if I see a card in an SGC slab, I, there is some element of respect from my perspective, even though I don't particularly collect those slabs, right? I've just kind of narrowed my lane to PSA and BGS. But I'm with you, man. See, SGC is definitely pushing BGS. And as a vintage collector, such as yourself, you're obviously super comfortable with SGC because you know they've been in the vintage market for a very, very, very long time and are well respected. A hundred percent, man. And, uh, you know, when, when, and, and I saw the, the questions that you do with Amil, I thought they were awesome. And I loved how you threw out there and you're like, okay, in order, modern, ultra modern, vintage nineties, like, you know, and you're asking all that. Um, so I know that you, I think you guys both had vintage last, right? I think I had vintage last. Yes. Okay. And it's, you know, that's all good. That's all good for sure. Um, but, if I, if I see an ultra modern card in a SGC slab, basic, I'm I'm pretty sure comps and probably in my mind, that's probably going to comp close to a raw price, right? Unless yeah. it's unless it's like a thick stock card that you know is 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 usually comes in a low grade type card, yeah. um, you know, because you're grading eight edges instead of four. But yeah, for the most part, man. But when I see vintage in SGC. I know that SGC is a tough grade with vintage. So if it I is. see a nice SGC three or a nice SGC four, I'll stand, you know, I, I feel very confident getting that card if it's vintage. For sure. And the prices on the secondary market reflect that for SGC. Three. Oh yeah. Without no, no doubt about it. SGC, yeah. SGC will oftentimes be higher comps than PSA when it comes to, when it yeah. comes to vintage. And let's be fair vintage collectors uh, i think a higher percentage of vintage collectors buy the card not the grade so even if oh. they see if they see four sgc sixes they're not going to treat all four of those sgc sixes the, the same they sh they look past that slab they look past that numerical number in the top right and they look at the card that's a fact i know that for sure because we see some crazy disparities on on the wilt that you've got over your shoulder mm -hmm. like crazy disparities of cards in the same exact numerical grade just because the IPL is completely different amongst PSA fours or PSA sixes or whatever the case may be. A hundred percent, man. And, uh, you yeah. know, you're speaking my language with buy the card, not the grade, because, yeah. uh, with, you know, like you're saying with that 61 set, 61 set is just notoriously off center. Horrible. Notoriously Horrible. Uh, it is unbelievable. Yeah. But w when it comes to vintage, right, it is truly the top two things I know at least I look for. And I think most vintage guys, because I, you know, I came up learning from these vintage guys. Um, what we look for really is really centering and clarity. You know, you yeah. want to make sure they have that clarity because a lot of these vintage cards, you know, they could have bright color. They could be nicely centered, good edges and stuff. But some of them have a fuzzy look to them because the technology sure. that was really printed, the printers that were printing these cards weren't always a hundred percent and there were right. mistakes. So, so you could almost, you almost kind of have to squint and it's almost like you're looking at, you know, like you need to put your glasses on to see it clearly. He's got that fuzziness factor. So clarity is huge. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Couldn't agree more. Uh, what's one thing about the hobby, if you could change it right now and you were omnipotent and you had this unilateral power, what's one thing about the hobby that you would change right this second? Hmm. Uh, you know, I love the idea of grading grading is absolutely necessary in this hobby we need to distinguish um you know a pristine card from a fair card you know all that um but i think there's just kind of at times too high of an emphasis put on grading and comps when you're looking at cards right like the difference between a psa 9 and a psa 10 say of an ultra modern card is tends to usually be what Two two and a half percent. I don't know what the multiplication for it is. I mean, wh what do you know it to be? It, it it honestly it depends on the card. You know, yeah. for, for for high end cards, if it you know if it's a serial number to ten gold and it makes it a pop one card, Rob, it could be, damn, it could be seven or eight to one. Yeah. You know, I mean, look at the eighty six Fleer Jordan. The difference and it's ten x right? Ten x. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. literally ten x. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, so yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I think there's just this massive difference 
and price and value placed on a PSA 9 or a PSA 10. And I think a yeah. lot of us have probably seen these videos on YouTube and a lot of us have the slabs themselves and we're looking at this card and we're like, how did this get graded a 9? This card yeah. is perfect. Perfect. And yeah. then I've seen cards in a PSA 10 case that have a little ding on it. And I'm like, did this ding happen after it was in case or so <laughs> it just happened right right so i i it just seems like i don't even know if i have an answer for it or i have a solution for it but i do yeah. feel like um you know i don't know kind of soft you'd shrink the margin you'd, sh you'd shrink the disparity between a psa 10 and a psa 9 Thank what you. about the disparity between a psa 10 and a bgs 9.5 you'd shrink yeah. that margin too i'm assuming right same same theory Definitely, a hundred percent, man. With 100%, you, um, you know, and and I think it's for that reason that I am not necessarily a PSA ten snob, right? Yeah. I know, and 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 I think I've heard you say before that you are, right? One or the other, PSA ten or BGS nine point five. Yes, and, and I know where you're getting at, Rob. And but the thing we have to remember, and and you know, you and I are old guys. I, well, you're not as old as me. I'm an old guy, but we're relatively old by hobby standards, right? Because a lot of people came in that were super young in in 2019, 2020. But just because it's this way now doesn't mean it's going to be this way five years from now. There's there's no rhyme or reason to this. I I don't necessarily. I mean, BGS 9.5 used to outsell PSA 10. So yeah. why can't it flip flop? It just depends. The market will dictate what the proper ratio is between those two grades, uh, between those two companies. Um, but just because it's X today doesn't mean it's going to be X, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, Rob. And so that's something to kind of keep in perspective as well. Definitely. I like I like BGS 9.5 minimum gems for the rare Jordan cards in the 90s because I can grow my collection quicker and I feel comfortable because it says gem mint on it in Beckett's reputable. And yeah. so I like to grow my collection quicker with 9.5s than necessarily demanding PSA 10s, which are so much more expensive. Yeah, love it, man. And and yeah. just to kind of, I think, wrap up this question, it's like, you know, we just got done talking about how vintage collectors buy the card, not the grade. Yeah. Um, and I think most, um, if not all, ultra modern or even modern collectors do the exact opposite. Opposite. They 100%. would rather, I think exactly. a lot of guys would rather have a PSA 10, even if like, even if they know it's not perfect, even if like yeah. they're the only ones that can see that it's not perfect over a PSA 9 that yeah. they cannot find a flaw in. I see it every day in the market. I agree with you 100%. I, to I totally agree with you. Question number four, how many, this is a great question. I just came up with this. How many slabs <laughs> do you have in your collection? And is that too many or not enough? Hmm. Approximately. Yeah. And, and this is a tough question because I think I have, I, I kind of have two different collections going, right? It's like I have my inventory and I have my collection and yeah. my inventory are, are cards that I have no problem putting out there for trade bait. I have no problem moving on Instagram or moving at shows. So, and my inventory cards can range from, you know, probably, f um, my inventory ranges from probably about a hundred dollars to 20 K and I probably have about 20 of those slabs in that, in that ballpark, probably about 20 slabs right now that I'm okay. always kind of shuffling in and out. Now my actual PC, as you pointed out, as you can see behind me, I have cards ranging from $5 to 70 K and I probably have about 70 of those slabs. And those are slabs that I will probably never move um chances are most most of the slabs that i do have in there people wouldn't want at this point but they mean something to me and they're important to me yeah. so you know in total i probably have about 100 slabs so are your big boys over your right shoulder is the lebron is that card not going anywhere or is that car is there a price for everything well and i think i've heard you say this before right there there's there's a price for everything what am i gonna I turn down a million dollars for this card right now the values i think a little under 100k for that card so would i turn down a million of course yeah not. but um no yeah these the, the cards i have behind me are are long-term holds in my opinion unless i have an opportunity to move up into a higher grade 
of the yeah. same card, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I long term, I absolutely believe in the LeBron Ultimate Collection. It's numbered out of two fifty. Long term, I absolutely believe in the nineteen thirty three Gaudi Babe Ruth. Yeah. Uh, long term, I definitely believe in Hulk Hogan's true rookie, the nineteen eighty two Wrestling All Star on card auto. You know, it's like so those cards I do believe in long term. So yeah. for me to move them, um, you know, now I would, I mean, why we would won't I... see those in your display case at the national? Probably not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you answered my question. That's my question. Yeah. So, but you didn't answer. Is that, is that too much or not enough? Where do you see your collection five years from now, more slabs or fewer slabs? I know you love, and you and Emil talk about this all the time. You like to consolidate and you like to, you know, the ultra modern people call it coloring up. We call it leveling up, right? Cause we're not really chasing necessarily colors and rainbows and all that, but leveling up, uh, you see yourself having more slabs or less slabs five years from now. I have not heard anyone call it color up before. Really? Oh, it's I mean, so all these ultra modern people, they're like, yeah, you got to color up, you know? base silver you know take your greens and your reds and turn it into oranges take your oranges and in in your blues to 299 and turn it into gold you, you never heard that color so this is this is like oh, one know. old man telling another old man about what the term lit means <laughs> so that's what that yeah. is right now so, so yeah so i'm all about um you know consolidating i'll buy some more stuff that i feel like yeah. is probably liquid or that i can move at some point Boom, consolidate again. So, yeah, I mean, five years from now, I see myself having less slabs. I mean, ideally, five years from now, I would have, you know, maybe 20 slabs in a safe somewhere or yeah. sitting behind me as I'm doing content. But, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah, probably 20 slabs that, you know, hopefully are valued in the high six to seven figures that all mean something that are all recognizable just like i can recognize those four over your right shoulder yeah. right now you want 20 of those and i don't blame you yeah um i think that's a plan man um as an investor right now okay mm -hmm. in this market given what we've seen maybe over the last 12 months but specifically last 90 to 120 days generally speaking would you rather one $100,000 card or five $20,000 cards to work with? Well, I tell you, over the last six months, what I did was I liquidated a lot of my inventory and a lot mm -hmm. of my collection to get one big LeBron card. So that was kind oh. of like my chase card. That was my goal. I got that. So my mindset really has always been to go for the big boy you know, yeah. go for the big boy. However, after hearing this question, I think the collector in me wants to take the five cards because I already know the five cards I, I would, I would purchase immediately. I would, I would evenly split it up over about 20 K and I would buy the highest grade of these five cards right here. The 57 tops, Bill Russell, rookie, the 52 tops, Willie Mays, uh, the 48 leaf Jackie Robinson, the 1984 star Michael Jordan. And I would probably want to buy back my 1951 Bowman Mickey Mantle true rookie, because that was actually one of the cards that I moved in order to secure the LeBron ultimate collection. And, yeah. uh, and that just has kind of like left the void. It's, it's the one left the void in the me. You, you feel the void with that one, right? The others, yeah, you did what you had to do, but that's the one you feel that, you know, you got to replace that void one day and it's just on your shoulder right there reminding you. hundred yeah. percent. And, and really even value aside, like, like if you were to tell me like, the 51 Bowman and the 52 tops, which is obviously the Holy grail. The, yeah. You told me that they were equal value or you put one or the other in front of me and you're like, this one's worth 50. This one's worth 50. I would take the 51 Bowman Mickey mantle 10 times out of 10. That's yeah. his true rookie. His first ever, you know, released card. It just love it. Rob, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on. I know you're busy. I, I don't know how you soundproof that room. I haven't heard any babies or two-year-olds or anything. Uh, your microphone, I'm already jealous of your I have microphone envy, obviously. You know, your audio is absolutely fantastic, and you got a voice that's perfect for YouTube. So I'm, uh, I'm following in your footsteps. I'm looking up at you and Emil and some of the other great content creators and just hoping that I can uh, – keep up with you guys and, and collaborate and do some stuff with you guys in the near future. But thank you so much for coming on our channel. 
Brian, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Keep it up. Okay. Have a great night, Rob.